Welcome to the Karen Reese Show. I'm psychic medium Karen Reese with my incredible co-host Alexis Zappia. Hello, hello. We are here at Shay's, one of my favorite places in Buffalo on this Halloween weekend, and I'm obsessed with it. <laughs> you know, it couldn't be more fitting. So tell me, because it is Halloween and mm -hmm. everything that goes bump in the night, and that's obviously the world that we live in, right? Mm -hmm. What's this ghost lighting thing? <laughs> and you make it sound like it's a common trend nowadays. <laughs> well, so What's this ghost lighting <laughs> thing? Tell about the ghost light, because you hear that when people date, yeah. right? I mean, there's something along Ghosting, that line. Ghosting, yeah, close, right. close. But in lieu of the <laughs> Shays Theater. Exactly. So every theater has this light on a stand that's called a ghost light. So even if nobody is here, that light is still there, and it's supposedly is to, like, allow the ghosts to all leave when no one's here oh, so so in other words go to the light yeah essentially yeah, yeah we all go to the light at go some to point. the light exactly <laughs> yes. um so we're here we're at historic shades which is incredible it's amazing and i love it here because to me it signifies community you know with buffalo oh, totally i mean mm -hmm. it's just such an amazing place to be where everybody can basically you know enjoy themselves feel you know, all the energy that's here too. And didn't you mention that um, when people see, you know, theater, they there's how many interpretations? Well, there's like 3,000 seats here. So in each person brings their own interpretation to the show. So you can go in seeing Hamilton, right? And they're all there for a common reason. And then when Hamilton's over, you can have over 3,000 different interpretations because there's over 3,000 people here seeing one show and with their past experiences. Interesting. I love this ghost lighting I interpretation. It. I know. What this else is are we a, missing? Because I know with Halloween Just to here. see a show. Just to see a show. <laughs> I just want to see. Love Wicked. Love Hamilton. Which well, one's your favorite? Stop. Don't do that to me. <laughs> don't do that to me. They all are. Well, we, uh, Hamilton is a special place in my heart because it was our last show as like a family of four. So um, that, Hamilton, and it's so iconic. Wicked, I've seen it with my roommate. So I don't know, just like different. And don't you believe when you uh, go to theater, there's always something to learn about yourself or learn about others. So mm -hmm. it really does come full circle. It does. It oh, does. I love it. I'm so excited. It's the weekend of the Halloween. That is true. So speaking of Halloween, we will be back with more from the Karen Reese Show with Jackie Burns and Cara Lindsay from Wicked um, from Broadway. So we're so excited to have them on the show and that will be coming up next. Welcome back to the Karen Reese Show. We are so excited for our next guest, Jackie Burns and Karen Lindsay. They were Glinda and Alphaba in the musical Wicked, which is one of my absolute babes. It got me into Broadway as I am such an obsessed lover today. Um, so we are so excited. It's such an honor to have you both with us today. Welcome to the show. How are you? Good. So good. Thank you for having us. Of course. We are so excited. <laughs> well, let me start with you, Kara. So can you explain the audition process? Also, did you try out for both Elfie and Glinda or was it uh, one or the other? Or who made the final decision? You know, if you could give us a whole, you know, uh, idea of how that whole thing, uh, you know, went down. Sure. Um, I actually was going in for Nessa Rose for many years. Um, Nessa Rose is the Wicked Witch of the East. <laughs> She's the one, yeah, I don't want to give away the show, but anyway. Um, and I went in so many times and I got to the final callback and it didn't happen and I was devastated. Oh. And, um, and then a few years down the road, I, I did Newsies and it's, uh, Wicked is cast by the same casting office as Newsies was, um, and uh, and I remember thinking I would love to try Glinda. It's just some uh, I love comedy, and I, I I'd never been in for that role before, and I wanted to give it a try. And I told my agents, and then it didn't happen for a while. I think they were they had been seeing me for Nessa Rose, so I think they were wrapping their minds around what. <laughs> and they also have like a laundry list of people that they want they want to see for Glinda. So the Finally, the timing was right. Um, I was in Newsies for about a year and a half and they were looking for a replacement on the national tour. And they said, would you leave Newsies on Broadway to go to the national tour to play Glinda? And I was like, absolutely, I'll go in for this. Um, so I went in 
And I remember it was the day after Halloween and I had far too much candy the night before and I couldn't sleep. (laughs) Oh no. I was like, (laughs) so I remember I didn't sleep at all. And I went into that audition feeling so crazy, but it was absolutely right. Um, And it felt great. And I was like, wow, it was so much fun. Um, And then I got a call back and I worked with Joe Mantello, who's the director of Wicked. And um, they were, they had a camera because David Stone, who's one of the producers, he couldn't be there and Mark Platt. Uh, Stephen Schwartz was there. Um, And it was, I was so nervous for that callback. And I was like, oh my gosh. Um, But also I was in Newsy still. So I figured like, if I didn't get that, then it's okay. Like it wasn't meant to be, this was like this dream maybe. And it worked out. I, I ended up getting it and I left Newsies and went on the um, national tour and played Glinda and Wicked. It was oh, awesome. That's awesome. so incredible. That's, that's awesome. beautiful. What a great story that is. That's it really is. Fun. To think I was going in for the wrong role. Who knew? It's, it's all totally about that. Totally right? the wrong role. I had no idea you were going in for Nessa to be my sister. No, you are. Gl- oh my God. Carol Lindsay is the funniest flipping <laughs> in the world. Why would you waste all of that comic genius on a role that like, no, you are Glinda through and through. I love you. I paid Jackie to say all these nice things. <laughs> no, it's the truth. Anybody who knows Kara is like, yeah, that's the truth. She is one of the funniest human beings. <laughs> so Jackie, you know, you played Alfie with, you know, for anyone who doesn't know, that's the green witch. Um, so how long did it take to get into costume and full makeup? And honestly, how did it come off? Like, did, were you going home green every night? Like, how did the, like, what happened? Um, well, so uh, they, they have to, they can't call you before a half hour or they'd have to pay you more. So um, you, you, get, you go exactly when everyone else does, a half hour before the show, but you're not in the first 10 minutes of the show. Linda opens the first 10 minutes in act one and she also opens the first 10 minutes of act two and you are getting ready until basically you hit the stage. Although like they get faster as they really know your face, but it really does take all the time. So it takes a good 30 to 35 minutes to get fully green, get your wig on, get dressed. Um, and then same thing, the second you finish Define Gravity, you have like two seconds to go quickly make a pee-pee and then you sit back right in the chair and they re-green you. And what's hard about the, the role of Alphabet is that it can be very segregating in the fact that like Glinda gets to, you know, you can, you're kind of tethered to, the, the green witch is tethered to a chair so people have to come and say hi to her where everyone else can kind of go do their own thing. So um, I always kept my door open so that people could come in because I really wanted to be a part of the company. You know, it was really hard because you would feel really sad as Alphaba because you'd be like, I have no friends. And when you are on stage, everybody hates you. So you're like, like, this is brutal. I remember when I first joined the Broadway company after doing it for, I got off topic. I will go back to the green. But I remember when I I first joined the, the Broadway company, I was a replacement. So everybody had been in it for a really long time. And the dresser, Kathy has been the alphabet dresser since the beginning. So she's dressed every alphabet. And it was about like two weeks into my run. And I, at intermission, just like started crying. And she was like, what's wrong? And I was like, everybody hates me. Everybody hates me here. And she was like, what? And I was like, yeah, everyone just hates me. She was like, oh, just know every alphabet goes through it. Because when we come on for the dance, like when I come on with the hat and everybody like stops and stares at you and laughs at you, they're all ad-libbing. So like, I didn't really know anybody yet because again, we're so segregated. So all I know is people being like, ew, I flipping hate her. She's the worst. Oh, she's so ugly. She ruins everything. She sucks. Like, you know what I mean? Just like hurling insult after insult and it feels so personal even though it's not and you're just like oh my god they all hate me they think I suck they don't want me to be here you know because you never see it and that's the other thing is alphabet you don't really get to what you have to get on green after the show most mostly everybody underdresses so like like the ensemble literally like they have these mob coats so they wear their real clothes underneath it so they can just like after the show like take off their coats and they're out the door before I even like start the first layer of degreening you know so like you leave the theater so much later than everybody else. So you're, you're never a part of the mix, you know? And so it can feel really segregating. Um, I would take so many showers because I would shower after the show. First you like use, I would use like makeup wipes to get a layer off. And then I'd jump in the shower and I would 
shower as much off as I could. And then I would go home and shower again. Karen knows we live together, you know, in Utah, you don't remember I used to go home and shower. You guys would like wait to eat dinner with me because I would go shower because it never felt like enough. I would just do enough to leave the theater, but I always had green. Oh in- yeah. Always have green in your ears. Most of the time people wouldn't know I was Alphaba until like you would like sign halfway through and then they'd see the green in like the back of your hair. And they're like, oh wait, were you Alphaba? But it'd be so funny because you'd like sign and they wouldn't say anything. They wouldn't be like, good job. And you'd be like, oh, they thought I sucked. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> My performance. You're like, oh. And then they like, you go by and they're like, oh wait, were you Alphaba? And you're like, oh yeah. And then they're like, oh, you're great. And you're like, oh, thank you. Um, they start crying. They start crying. They're like, oh my God. No, that was just Kara when Kara would cry when she would see me. Um, it's true. That's true. <laughs> but yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. And when I first started, my skin did not like the green makeup. And I would get in the winter, especially, I would get these huge, like massive zits, but my skin would be so dry from over washing it from having to take, because you have to take off the green in between shows. You can't stay green. So like on those days I was showering like five times a day, you know, and your skin would get so dry. So then the green would like, my skin would crack because it was so dry and the green would get under my skin. So then I would have like big green zits, like boy, like zits are bad enough, but then add like green to it. That'd be under your skin. So I like couldn't get at it. So I just have these green, oh, it's hideous. Some girls have no problem with it. My skin hated it. The second time I did it, my skin like got used to it. Oh, that's so funny. Oh God. I remember you ever having pimples. Your skin is perfect. No, I had the worst skin. I'm telling you the first, when I was on tour and the, my first, cause I did it twice on Broadway and the tour, the first tour and the first time on Broadway, I was, oh God, it was so bad. My skin was so, you, I was one of those people that you would look at and be like, oh, that poor thing that like, <laughs> that hurts. Do you know what I mean? Like you would feel bad. Like, I laugh now, but I used to cry all the time. Oh. I look like a gargoyle. Yeah. <laughs> but you feel very pretty green. That's the other, that's the weird thing. Like once you are green, you feel gorgeous because they can draw your eyebrows in exactly where they really should be because they, they like mute out all your features. Like you're completely green. You look like, like a turtle. And then they like draw in your eyebrows exactly where they should be. And like put your cheekbone exactly where it should be. And like, it's just like, you get to look like the best version of yourself. So like when you're green, you're like, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's so nice. I love it. Oh my God, that's so funny. Oh, uh, so Kara, quick question. How did you, um, or what was your routine to get into character? And then the day of the show, did you have to like have breasts? You couldn't sing because you needed to, you know, save your vocals for later. Or how does that all work? Well, I feel like I, uh, so many memories are flooding back from doing the show with Jackie. We had so much fun. Um, and like our, our dressing rooms would be generally right near each other. And our bathrooms would kind of like, like in LA, they were right near each other. And I'd be like, oh, like warming up. <laughs> and she's like, shut up. Or you'd like mimic me. Yeah. But- <laughs> <laughs> But um, I always had, just like Jackie, I, I like to have my door open generally um, because I, you know, our, I think our um, relationships off stage inform our relationships on stage. So I like to feel like I'm close with the people I'm working with. And I also, like with Glinda, she's such a social butterfly. I felt weird if I closed myself off before the show and then pretended to be this, you know, I like everybody. I'm always like, yay, let's have a good time when I was just, you know, shutting everybody out. So I always liked to have the door open and feel like the energy was coming in. Um, and then I would warm up my voice in the bathroom, probably like five minutes before the show sometimes, but I would do a warm up, um, at home, like at wherever we were staying on tour in an Airbnb, I would do it in the shower. I mean, the shower, all of us sound amazing in the shower. It, yeah. you, that's Your vocals, the acoustics off the walls. That's right. And it actually, the acoustics in a shower helped me to find placement better. It's just, I don't know. It, like, a, unlike a dead space where you're like, I feel like I'm pushing. Um, so anyway, I would warm up in the shower at home and then I'd go and get ready at the theater. And then I would do like a quick warm up at five minutes and I do the show. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. It's so simple. I you make it sound so shower. simple. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> So, but I would always come over and say, have a good show to Jackie before the show, because we don't really get to see each other during the show. 
except on stage. Yeah. Oh, interesting. And she would come, and you would come at, at intermission after when she would go. Oh, yeah. She would always check in top of show and mid show. She's like the sweetest human being. Oh, I just really love her. And Jackie Burns is the most iconic Elphaba. I mean, people, <laughs> when I say people cry when she they meet her, I mean it. They do. Just you, Kara, but God, I love you for seeing me. I'll cry. I do cry when I see you, in addition to the many fans of yours. <laughs> it was so fun because when tour, we got to live together for um, a city, our last city, our closing city in Utah. And it was like, it just was like the most fun ever getting to like do the show with her. And then she would always get up earlier than me and she would always, like always be like in the kitchen like you know just like waiting and it was so cute She's like good morning and I was like I get to wake up to the cutest little human and she would sometimes make this for Todd like all these like she's such a good cook like she's so cute she was so oh my god it was so cute I'm so excited <laughs> I made a frittata I made a <laughs> toast it was hilarious because it was like Alpha and Glinda really were like living together like really yeah, just like on the show just or just like in the musical exactly so Kara, if any of our audience members would like to connect or find out more about you, where could they do that? On Instagram, Kara Lindsay one and Twitter at Kara Lindsay one and Facebook, just Kara Lindsay. Love it. <laughs> and then Jackie, what about you? Uh, Instagram, Jackie Burns NYC, Twitter, Jackie Burns NYC and Facebook, Jackie Burns. <laughs> <laughs> well both of you thank you thank so you. so much this was one of my favorite interviews that totally. we've done thank you so much for joining us we are so lucky to have had you with us today thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Oh. Welcome back to a special Halloween edition of the Karen Reese Show. As always, anytime Karen's around, spirits around. So if you'd like to enter it's for your chance to win a reading to potentially connect with your loved ones or to hear about your future, you may do so by entering in our website, www.karenreese.com, spelled K-A-R-Y-N-R-E-E-C-E.com. You can also enter on Facebook at Karen Reese Psychic Medium or on Instagram and on Twitter at Karen Reese. You can also send us an email, which is Karen and then the little at sign, KarenReese.com. And then you can also enter on TikTok, which is new, Karen Reese one So in your submission, make sure you write your first and last name and why you deserve to win a reading. So we have a very special winner with us who wrote in on Instagram. Stacy, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm wonderful. Thank you guys so much. I'm so excited. Awesome. Karen, take it away. A quick question. Do you know somebody that was adopted or are you close to somebody that's got an adoption connection? No, not that I know of. Yeah. Although, like, I was, I was today for work. I was talking to somebody about who, who might be adopted. That's why I'm asking. Your grandmother and, was with you. Go on. Yes, and and their name has. I can't. I can't tell you because of work. But the name has a a lean sound. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Just so you know, that tells you that your grandmother is in your house stalking you as you go about your life. Who's got the December or who had a December birthday? Usually the birthday. I was going to say, is that you? Grandma said happy birthday to you. By the way, that goes behind you. (laughs) That's a great Christmas gift. You know, so... So we know that you have a connection with an adoption as they spoke earlier. We see where the name could be. We won't go into great detail, but grandma also said, do something very special for your birthday in December. So take a trip, do something along those lines. By the way, you need to get your feet massaged. Do you like getting your feet massaged? Oh man, dude. <laughs> Cause Graham's talking about, did you make the appointment or were you thinking about getting that massage? Uh, it- Yes and no. I do like getting my feet massaged, but I've had a foot injury. Oh, so. that makes sense. Cause she said something with your foot an issue, but then she says, get massage and it, okay. So your foot you're injured. So now you have to try to get it back onto healing. So a good massage might help it. Okay. She says, you know, work that energy, you know, get your muscles. Cause I keep feeling that. Um, I'm actually feeling my feet get massaged. Wish I could share that with you. It feels really good. <laughs> <laughs> um, the name Sarah also keeps coming up around you. Is that a friend of yours yet? Are you close to a Sarah? What's that connection? I did. My childhood friend was named Sarah. Yeah. yeah. And I keep hearing the name like a Corey, Courtney, Corey. Um, so if you're not close to like a, go ahead, what were you going to say? 
my cousin's husband's name is Corey. Okay. Are you close to your cousin? I am close to her. Yep. Yeah. I was going to say, I felt very close. Yeah. So your so your cousin, Corey and your cousin have called call. <laughs> Have you been slacking out talking to the family lately? Just so you know. Yes, I have been. Yeah. Yeah. They're just saying that. See, grandma and grandpa, they know exactly what's going on as far as that's concerned. So FYI, this is very interesting. Um, do you know a male that may have been shot? That yes. Was, yeah. Yeah. On that, fam- on that family side? Yeah. Yes. Like a close friend of the family. He was murdered. Yeah. Yeah. I was just going to say, cause he just came in. He said I was murdered mm-hmm. and he wants you to relate to the family, um, that I'm okay. Not to worry. He didn't feel any pain. And he says, I'm very happy where I'm at. He doesn't want anybody to be upset. Everybody still seems to be very raw, even though it's been some time he said, but just as an FYI, I think he said the name Dan or Ann or something close to that must be in his family somehow or in the family that he's connected to. But if you can pass that message on, oh, do you know? Oh, no, I think I know who it is then. No, I think it's, oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's actually my great uncle. That's who it is. What's the Dan Ann connection? Well, his wife's name was Ann. So is, my, is my great aunt. So yeah. 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 He's standing here. Yep. So Did he get murdered or was that somebody else? He w- he actually, I think, believe that he killed himself. I think he shot himself. Okay. Um, yeah. Cause he kept saying sense. the shot. Yeah. Kept saying the shot. I was shot. I was shot. Yeah. So he's here and he said connected, you know, this is, yeah. So if you can pass on obviously to other people in the family and he, he wants me to tell you goes, that was the dumbest thing um, I've ever done. And nobody should do that. Mm-hmm. Never take your own life. But he said, I'm fine. And some people still hold that you know, as it, as it goes down, he says, no, it's not genetic. So I think sometimes people think that. And he said, no, we all have decisions. Are you connected to somebody like a Carl or Carly or Carson Carter, like a car sound, something car? Carly. Yes. Carly. Yeah. Is that a good friend of yours? That's a, yeah. Yeah. When you met Carly, did you feel that you always knew Carly or you liked Carly? Remember you're on camera. I mean, I liked her right away. <laughs> good <Yeah>. answer. <laughs> yeah. good, she can see this and, right. and tell you. Yeah, because your grandmother said, I really like that car, car, Carly. I couldn't hear it really clearly because it takes a lot of energy. She goes, no, her good friend, Carly. So yeah, and you two were nuns in a past life, probably in the 1300s. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, sure is. That's what your grandfather said to tell you that. That's so funny. One other quick thing. Do you like to watch UFOs? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, because and you watch a lot of them on TV, like ancient mm-hmm. aliens and stuff. Yeah, because your grandfather says you a lot of times we sit down and we'll watch, you know, uh, ancient aliens and UFO, uh, UFO related material. And he said they do exist by the way. So FYI. Oh, is there a William or a Bill connection too? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Is that your grandfather? Who's that there? Yes. Yeah. Cause he says, make sure. And I'm her grandfather. I thought he was trying to tell me that he says, I get my two minutes of fame with my granddaughter and they all love you. <laughs> and he was the one that was remarking about you, uh, you know, moving. He said a move. And then he said, putting things together, hammers and nails. He said, you're pretty good with that, but you need a better drill. Does your drill suck? I don't have a drill. That's yeah, probably what he's saying. You need to get a drill. You need a, you need a good drill or you need a better drill. You need to get a drill is what he's trying to tell you. Get the Bosch. They have a small one for women's hands. I use it all the time. <laughs> too, don't we? Yeah. But in the big scheme of things, it looks like you're on the right path. You got three, you know, great things ahead of you. We just got to make some modifications, but you need to be a little bit more aggressive when you can be as far as your dating, go where the boys go. I'm definitely seeing a ring on your finger and I'm seeing some beautiful estate jewelry. Okay. So I love that. <laughs> I love I like it too. too. <laughs> my grandpa Bill said we're also thrilled about your new move. So they're going to be your home warming gift later tonight. You'll have activity with your grandparents. Oh, gosh. <laughs> they're all in your house. <laughs> they're all talking while I'm trying to get moving on with things like that. But anyways, awesome. Well, Stacy, thank you so much for joining us, and hopefully that gave you the peace and closure that you needed. Karen, thank you. And Spirit, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome back to The Karen Bree Show. As always, if you would like to connect with Karen for your chance to potentially win a reading and hear about your loved ones or um, hear about your future, you may do so by visiting our website at www.karenreese.com, spelled 
K-A-R-Y-N-R-E-E-C-E.com. You can also send us an email at Karen, K-A-R-Y-N, and then the little at sign, KarenReese.com. You can also visit us on Facebook at Karen Reese Psychic Medium or on Instagram and on Twitter at Karen Reese. You can also visit her on TikTok at Karen Reese and the number one or call our office phone at 716-580-2520. What an incredible treat today coming here. <laughs> yes, I love it here. My favorite memory being here is my mom took me and my brother when I was so young and I had to sit on my, well, I was going to say when I was short, but I still am short. Uh, when we had to sit on our knees because we couldn't see. And like from then until all the way until now, um, how times have changed but yet still remained somewhat central to Shays and historic. I love it. Oh my God. I know I haven't been here in a while and I'm so looking forward to the mm -hmm. upcoming shows that they're going to be having. I mean, how cool is that? I love it. Just I love such it. a wonderful experience. And for anybody out there, I strongly urge, you know, you want to go on the website and take a look at all the great things that Shays happens to be doing. So for everyone, both past and present, who made this possible, past staff, future staff, everyone at WBBZ, thank you guys so much for allowing us here today. Such a treat to be here. And on that note, cheers hey. to that. Cheers. Cheers to that. Delicious.